Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about parallel lines cut by a transversal line. In this video, we really just want to start talking about some of our vocabulary that we're going to be dealing with. Um, first off, parallel lines are going to be lines in the same plane that never intersect. Okay, so we can say, let's call this guy line A, this guy line B, and if we draw a little triangle on here like this, this indicates that those two lines are parallel. So I'm telling you that lines A and B are parallel. Now a transversal is a line that intersects two lines in the same plane at two different points. So if I were to take a line like this and intersect line A and B, this is now a transversal. That line is called a transversal. And we'll call that go ahead, line T for transversal. Okay, so now our transversal has intersected our two parallel lines. Whenever that happens, there is always going to be exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles that get formed. Okay, so when parallel lines get cut by a transversal, there will always be eight angles formed. And the neat thing is that these eight angles have some very common characteristics. And eventually what you'll be able to see is that if I give you one of these angle measures, you'll be able to find the other seven. But first, let's talk about some of the names and some of the properties of these angles. Now the first one I want to talk about are called the alternate interior angles. So we have the alternate interior angles. Okay, now think about it. Interior is talking about the inside. Think about your car. You've got the interior and the exterior. The interior is the part inside the car. When we talk about the interior angles, we're talking about the angles that are in between the lines, in between lines A and B, the interior angles. In my example here, the interior angles are 3, 4, 5, and 6. The exterior angles, the angles that fall outside of the parallel lines, are 1 and 2, 7 and 8. So we have the interior angles, the angles that fall in between the lines, and the exterior angles, the angles that fall outside of the lines. Okay, now properties, alternate interior angles. The alternate, we're talking about the opposite sides of the transversal. So if you take a quick look here, angles four and angles five are alternate interior angles. They are interior in that they fall between the, the parallel lines and they are on the opposite sides of the transversal. Angle 4 is on the right side, angle 5 is on the left side. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So we can say that angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. Now there's another pair of alternate interior angles. Can you figure out what they are? alternate interior angles in between lines A and B and on opposite sides of the transversal. That would be angles 3 and 6. Angle 3 and 6 are also alternate interior angles, so therefore 3 and 6 are also congruent. And you can kind of tell by looking at them that they're congruent. If you notice, angle 3 is a big obtuse angle and so is angle 6. And if you look at angle 5, you see it's an acute angle, and so is angle 4. Okay, so those are our alternate interior angles. Uh, which then our next one would be the alternate exterior angles. We have some alternate exterior angles too. Okay, the alternate exterior angles, just like the interior angles, only they fall outside of the line, so we're talking 1, 2, 7, and 8. And the alternate refers to the opposite sides of the transversal. And alternate exterior angles are also congruent. So our alternate exterior angles, if you look, angle 1 on the left side of the transversal, outside of the lines, and angle 8 on the right side of the transversal, outside of the parallel lines, those are alternate exterior angles. Angle 1 and angle 8. And like we said before, alternate exterior angles are also congruent. They have the same measure. Alright, there's another pair of alternate exterior angles. What is it? Angles 2 and 7. Angle 2 
is congruent to angle 7. So there are your alternate interior angles and your alternate exterior angles. Uh, next we have what's called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles. And corresponding angles lie on the same side of the transversal on the same side of lines A and B. In other words, they're in the same relative position. Corresponding angles are congruent. They have the same measure. And a good example of some corresponding angles. One more time, we said they lie on the same side of the transversal, so they're all going to be on either the left side or the right side. And they're on the same sides of line A and B. So if you look at angle one, which is the left side of the transversal on the top of line A, well, the corresponding angle to angle 1 would be angle 5, which is on the left side of the transversal on the top side of line B. So we could say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5 because they are corresponding angles. Angle 3, which is on the left side of the transversal on the bottom of line A, is corresponding with angle 7. And therefore they are congruent angles. Angle 3 and angle 7 are congruent. And the last type of angle, by the way, we could also say the same thing about 2 and 6. We can say the same about 4 and 8. Um, okay, the last type of angle that we're going to talk about here are the same side interior angles. Same side interior angles lie on the same side of the transversal between lines A and B. They're interior angles that lie on the same side. Now the neat thing about same side interior angles is that they are supplementary. They will always add up to 180 degrees. So for instance, if you look, angle 3 and angle 5 are same side interior angles. Angle 3 and angle 5 must have a sum of 180 degrees. And we can say the same thing about which other pair? 4 and 6. Angles 4 and angle 6 are also same side interior angles. So there's some of your vocabulary that you're going to be dealing with as we talk about parallel lines being cut by a transversal. Get those words down, understand their meanings, understand which angles are congruent, and eventually, if I give you the measure of angle 7, you'd be able to give me the other 7 angle measures.